Hi there, and welcome to the second of my uh, advent calendar of squeeze boxes. Um, and <clears throat> today I'm going to start straight off uh, with the absolute classic. One of these, the Hona Poker Work. It's one of the archetypal um, uh, sort of cheaper end instruments that was, has always been used in English traditional music. Normally in the key of DG, my very first instrument was one of these um, in DG. Don't have that one anymore because I almost annihilated it busking. Um, uh, and this one does have some unusual features to it. It's in the key of FB flat, uh, which is very uh, unusual. <laughs> and uh, yes, uh, we'll, we'll get to playing it soon. But what I'd like to do with this one, because it is um, you know, standard 21 button right hand, 8 button left hand, no stops, two voices on the treble side, which means there's two reeds tuned to the same note. Um, uh, both notes are slightly detuned to each other to give you a kind of a little tremolo effect. Um, and it's the first of many of these instruments that you'll see with the brand Hona on it. Um, Hona were a massive German company that made a huge range of different instruments um, throughout the 20th century. And uh, the poker work is, is one of the best known uh, over here. It's sometimes called the, uh, I think it's the 2915, uh, which are its dimensions in uh, centimetres. Um, so yeah, um, we'll have a look inside. And I'll use this as an opportunity to show you all the different uh, parts of the instrument um, and just explain what they do. So here we have the classic Hona Poke work, um, the sort of, I don't know, I wouldn't say bog standard instrument, but it's uh, it's definitely one, uh, it's the one, as I said, I started on, um, and I think a lot of people did. And there's no frills on these instruments, just uh, enough to get the job done. So I'm going to take it to bits for you. Um, now this one it has a classic set of four pins, two on the top, two on the underside. I need a pair of pliers to take them out. Put somewhere safe. And I'm going to show you what all the bits do. So, first thing we're going to do is take the treble mechanism off. And this is the treble keyboard on this side. I'll take this grill cover off so you can see underneath there. So this is basically um, how the keyboard works. Uh, you have little sprung levers for each button and all they do is opens a hole that goes through to each reed and each reed is in its own little chamber on a reed block. So with a screwdriver you can just loosen these two things that attach the reed blocks in place and take them out. So this is a reed block, um, it's a wooden construction. There's the holes that allow the air to go through to each reed in its individual chamber. The reeds themselves are, get that in the right place, the reeds themselves are the metal strips on there and they have a valve here which will uh, stop the air going the other way and uh, if I were to take one of these off it has where, where this valve is on the other side that has another reed and in a melodeon they're tuned to different pitches so you get the different note on the push and the pull. These ones go rather scarily all the way to the edge of the reed block they don't normally do that on poker works that's because this is a set of DG blocks with a set of um, uh, B flat and F <laughs> reeds, which are much, much lower. And uh, yes, I've surprised myself that I didn't completely kill this instrument doing that, uh, and that they happen to sound good. Um, so I don't know if you can see there, but the uh, the reeds themselves are affixed with beeswax, and it's actually a beeswax and rosin mixture, um, and uh, that uh, allows it to be totally reversible so you can melt um, the wax off and, and clean it off with a knife and then melt new wax when you want to replace the reed. This part here where the blocks attach to is uh, often called a soundboard. Um, it isn't a soundboard in 
so much as a guitar soundboard resonates. It's um, sometimes known as a fondo as well. Uh, that's probably a more correct name. Um, but whatever it is, it does have a part in um, how the uh, reeds sort of uh, are allowed to flex, basically. Anything that keeps the reeds more rigidly in place while they're sounding uh, gives you a much more um, direct sound, a much stronger sound. Um, uh, sometimes too strong a sound, actually, and uh, there are nuances in getting an instrument sounding just right. So uh, let's do the same for the other side now. Um, we'll separate the bellows with another four pins from the left hand mechanism. So now we can see we've got the bellows here which are on their frames. Now this frame on a pokework is designed to sort of slot into there and there's a gasket to stop air leaking around the outside. And inside the left hand side again you've got two reed blocks, classic formation, one for the bases and one for the chords. Those are the big bass reeds. You can actually flick them. But it sounds very different when air goes over. We've got the valves. Actually, I might need to replace these ones. They're flapping down a bit. We'll put some springs on that hold the valves down. Um, and then the chords are kind of in the same register as the, the treble reeds, really. They're similar sort of pitch. And they come in little triangles of three and as you can see when I play the bass mechanism you see the holes opening the bass button and there's a chord button there's a bass button there and a chord button there so let's get this left hand uh, dismantled on the inside so you can see that there's little screws here to hold on the strap so Here's the inside of the left hand mechanism and it's a very simple set of um, coupled things from the buttons. Um, these levers open and allow the notes through and then the air button is just a hinged sprung joint that goes to a big hole on the other side which allows you to gulp air. And there we go, back to how it was. So here we are um, with the instrument, uh, and I'll give you a bit of a tune on it in a bit. Um, uh, so yes, there are some oddities about this, as we've seen from the inside, the reeds um, are not the original reeds, uh, and so that's that's been changed. There's a few little bits and pieces on here that uh, show that, that it's been mucked about with a bit. I had a go at uh, trying to restore the back and then gave up halfway through, so I've just sanded down where the pattern was um, uh, it was badly damaged against somebody's whoever the previous owner was um, it, it becomes sort of rubbed uh, like you can see on this area here and all, mo most of the pattern had gone um, it's had its bellows slightly patched up with some extra tape here the original color of the te bellows tape is gold with an orange inside uh, and what else um, Hona Pokerworks normally come with a, a leather thumb loop on the back of the keyboard um, which uh, allow you to choose to hold the, the instrument with the thumb loop, although most people would recommend against um, doing it that way. Uh, it's got some more damaged uh, sanded down bit here where uh, my old way of attaching microphones on stage uh, were used and uh, th there was Velcro there and it all got completely messed up the finish so it's it's seen a few uh, a few different lives this one uh, and uh, um, I'll show you might where my uh, current microphone holders are and I use neodymium magnets um, to hold the microphones in place uh, and there's on the left hand in fact look it's picked up a bit of random metal <laughs> there's one there for the left hand mic um, so when I'm on stage I use those um, interestingly this one was actually in a different key for a lot of its um, time playing uh, so if you've got any of my old albums with John Bowden um, 
and in fact some really early Bellowhead stuff. Uh, I used to play the Rigs of the Time with Bellowhead and Copshire Home Fair. There's a track called the Shropshire Minor as well. Um, and those ones are when this had a different set of reeds in it, which were tuned to minor scales on the push. Uh, so it's a, <laughs> it's a long time since it's been a normal DG. So anyway, um, to hear what these low reeds sound like in here, and these harmonica reeds, I didn't. Uh, I bought them on a whim because someone was selling off a set that they had for a project and then didn't need. Um, but actually, in this box, they sound absolutely glorious, and I do like the sound of original Hona reeds. But they, um, yeah, given that I didn't really have to tune them from the factory setting, and that I, that they didn't fit in the reed blocks as you saw. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to try and play uh, a thing that I worked up on here a few years ago called the slow slow and it's uh, the tune um, is called the slow um, and I decided to play it at a completely different pace it's normally quite a fast dancey tune I nearly remember how it went. <laughs> so that was the slow, slow. See you in the next one.